What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's beginner's level video, I'm sharing how I created this oversized streetish menswear t-shirt on Clue 3D. Let's get started. So guys, when you open up Clo, this is the screen that you will see. You have your 3D window on the left and the 2D window on the right. The most commonly used sections when creating a garment are the library, which I can open up by clicking here, the object browser by clicking here, and the property editor by clicking here. Now step one is to load an avatar onto the screen, which you can do by coming here to the library section and under it, clicking on avatar. We have four options here. Let's choose a male avatar and down here are the avatar options. Double click on any one of them to open it. I'm going to click on Luca for today's garment and we now have Luca on the 3D window and on the 2D window we have his silhouette which I'm going to use as a guide while creating patterns. Now before we get to pattern creation, to give us more space to work with, you can minimize the library by clicking on this arrow icon. I'm also doing the same for property editor and object browser by clicking on their arrows as well as I don't need them right now. Now step two is to draft the main t-shirt patterns, namely the t-shirt's body and the t-shirt's sleeves. For this, I'm going to choose the polygon tool from here, then zoom in using the scroll wheel on your mouse. I can further move my 2D screen about like so by holding down option and left clicking my mouse and dragging it. And let's start drawing just the left half of the front bodice of the t-shirt. I'm going to start by placing a point at the center front neck. Then to get a curved line, I'm clicking and dragging. And to end the curved line right there, come back and click here. Then move to drawing the shoulder, which is just a straight line, so a simple click. Then the armhole, once again curve it. The side seam. The hem and back to the center front neck. The left half is now done in the 2D window and you can see that the exact same pattern has appeared on the 3D window. Let's continue drawing in the 2D window and in a few minutes, I'll show you how the patterns we create in the 2D window can be made into a garment in the 3D window. So next, I'm going to select the edit pattern tool to right click on just my center front line. And I can now unfold this pattern so that it opens up to include the right half as well. We have three unfold options and I'm going to choose the third option here called unfold symmetric editing with sewing because not only do I want my pattern unfolded, I also want to have the benefit of symmetric editing which means that any change I make to the left half of my pattern will also apply to the right half. And this is what we have for the front bodice. Now to make the back bodice, all you need to do is go to your transform pattern tool Click this pattern and copy paste it using the usual shortcuts of command C and command V. Now let's make a few changes. I'm going to raise the back neck by selecting the edit pattern tool and then clicking this point. Then use the up arrow key on my keyboard to move this point higher. Now every time you hit the up arrow key once, the point will shift by exactly one centimeter. Let's also give it a better shape by clicking on this point to bring up the handles attached to it. Then drag the handle up till the back neck curve looks okay. Alright, I also want to select just the back shoulder here and hit the up arrow key because in an actual pattern, the back neck is usually higher. I'm also going to deepen the front armhole a little bit like so. We now have the front and back pattern pieces ready in the 2D window. Now in the 3D window, if I right click anywhere and drag my mouse, I can turn my avatar around like so, left to right or up to down. I can also hold down option, left click and drag my mouse to move it from side to side or from top to bottom. If there is a specific view that you want to see your avatar in, you can hit the number 2 on your keyboard to get the front view, number 4 to get his right side view, 6 for his left side view and 8 for his back view. All the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8. Let's hit 2 to get back to the front view. 
Now, for the patterns that I have created, we now need to drape this as a t-shirt onto the avatar. To do this, let me first move both my patterns away from the avatar like so. Now, Clo has made it very convenient to drape patterns through a feature called Arrangement Points. For this, come here to the Avatar Display button and click on Show Arrangement Points. With that, these blue dots will appear all around the avatar's body and they basically help you place your patterns around the avatar. So if I click on my front bodice, then hover my mouse over any of the blue points, you can see that my pattern piece is being arranged on the avatar's body in different spots. However, if I hover over this blue dot, this arrangement of my pattern piece looks closest to how a t-shirt pattern should look. So I'm going to click and my pattern gets placed there. You can also see that the pattern no longer is straight and stiff. Instead, it curves around the body a little bit. Now for my back pattern, before we go place it in the exact same way, I'm going to right click the pattern and choose flip horizontal. Now, why did I do this? I did this because both the front pattern and the back pattern were facing forward. And we are not going to be able to stitch these patterns into a t-shirt unless we place both patterns back to back. So horizontally flipping it made the back pattern face the other way, which is why we now see that it is black in color because black indicates the back of the pattern piece. Now turn the avatar around by right clicking the screen and dragging your mouse. Then like usual, click the pattern piece and find a blue dot that has the perfect arrangement for it. And our t-shirt is slowly coming together. Now you must be wondering what this object here is. This is what we call the gizmo. It only looks complex but is very simple guys. It's a tool to help you place your pattern correctly. This blue line will move the pattern outwards or inwards. The red line will help you move from side to side. The green goes up and down. And see these circles? Clicking and dragging the red circle tilts the pattern on its axis. The blue one rotates it like so. And the green one turns it around. So you can use them if you need more help placing your patterns properly. Alright, now that we've arranged the front and the back, let's turn the arrangement points off by going back to the avatar display button and unclicking show arrangement points. Our next step is to stitch these patterns together. For this, we have a few sewing tools available, but I'm going to use the segment sewing tool for now. Now, once this tool is selected, you can stitch two segments of a pattern together by clicking on one and then clicking on the other. And you can see a red color shade. That means that there is now a set of stitches connecting these two pieces together at this side seam. And because we chose symmetric editing in the start while creating these patterns, the other side seam has also been automatically connected and it is shown through a blue color shade. Now, apart from the side seams which are done, I also need to connect my shoulder seams with stitches. So let's click here and then click here. And once again, we just need to do one shoulder and the symmetric editing will take care of the other shoulder. Now in the 3D window as well, you can actually see lines connecting the pattern pieces together, depicting our stitch lines. And this is how we know which parts will be stitched together. And with that, I can come up here and click simulate or the shortcut is to hit the space bar on your keyboard. The front and the back have now been stitched together. What's cool is you can actually adjust your garment like this and that makes it feel like you are working on an actual person with actual clothes. Now let's move to the sleeves. Now to draft the sleeves, I'm going to choose the edit pattern tool and first simply click on the armhole like so and that is because when I click it, the total length of the line will show here right next to my mouse. I know that it is 27.63 centimeters in length. So let's keep that in mind and go draft the sleeve pattern. I'm going to first come up here to the polygonal tool that we used to draft the body. But instead, I'm going to click and hold it down until additional options open up. And you can see that we have three more options to help us with drafting patterns. I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. Now with it, I'm going to simply click once anywhere on my background and this box will open up. Let me move the box to the side so that you guys can see what's happening behind it better. So on the screen, 
the outline of a box has formed and that box is currently 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters as listed here. So to draft my sleeve pattern, we previously checked and found out that the armhole length is 27.63 centimeters. So I'm going to input that value for the width and then for the length or the height, I'm going to go with about 30 centimeters, which is around the measurement for an oversized t-shirt's sleeve length. And you can see while I was inputting these measurements, the dimensions of the box at the back changed as well to give us a preview of what the sleeve pattern will look like. This size looks fine to me, so I'm going to hit OK. And the pattern is now fully formed in white. Let me move it a bit closer to the body. Now there is just one more measurement that I need before completing the sleeve draft, and that is the sleeve cap height. And to get that, I'm going to divide my original armhole measurement of 27.63 by 3. And the result is 9.21 centimeters. I'm going to make a note of that somewhere so I can come back to it in a bit. Now with the edit pattern tool, I'm going to right click this line and choose offset as internal line. Doing this will allow me to create a line within this pattern that is perfectly parallel to the selected line. By default, Clo will offset one internal line at a distance of 0.5 centimeters from the line that you selected. And you can see a preview of it here in the form of a red line. So let's change these values and let's input the sleeve cap height of 9.21 centimeters and the preview of the line that we can see at the back changes. Let's hit OK. And the rest is simple, guys. All I'm going to do is drag this point from here to here and delete the internal line we made. I'm then going to select this line, right click and choose split because I want to split this line into two equal halves. When this table opens up, offering you three ways in which to split your line, we can ignore the first two columns and come straight to uniform split with the line being divided into two equal segments and hit OK. A point has now appeared in the very center of this line. Now click and hold down on your edit pattern tool to reveal more tools that you can use. I'm going to come to the edit curvature tool this time and that will basically allow me to curve any straight line. So I'm going to click on this line like so and curve it upward and then click on this line and curve it downward. And it should look like this and this is what forms one half of the sleeve pattern and this segment is what has to be stitched to this segment. Now an important thing to note in Clo is before you stitch two segments together, they need to measure a similar length. The garments will look great and drape beautifully if the pattern segments stitched together are the exact same length. But that is sometimes difficult to achieve, especially in cases like this. So it is recommended to at least get both segment lengths to a similar length with no more than a difference of 0.5 centimeters between them. So let's check if both segments that we're going to stitch together have similar measurements. Like before, if you choose the edit pattern tool and click any line, you can see the total length. So I'm going to click this line and then hold down shift and choose this line. And the total of both, we can see that it is 29.58. And in case you guys forgot the armhole measurement, because I certainly did, let's click on it again. And it says it is 27.63. So we have a difference of about 2 centimeters. What I'm going to do now is adjust my sleeve pattern so that it fits my armhole better. I'm going to click this line and then hit the left arrow key once on my keyboard, which will shift the line by one centimeter. Let's hit it one more time so that it can shift by one more centimeter. Now let's check to see if the measurements are closer. And on the sleeve, we have a total of 27.64, which is great and almost equal to the 27.63 on the armhole. Awesome guys. Now an actual sleeve pattern would taper towards the hem. So I'm going to click this point and move it in by two centimeters like so. I'm then going to click on this line and unfold my sleeve pattern to get the left half. I don't want to have symmetric editing this time because the left half is actually going to be slightly asymmetric from the right half. Now that our full sleeve pattern is here, and we've made sure that the right side of the sleeve perfectly fits the front bodice. I also need to ensure that the left side of the sleeve perfectly fits the back bodice where it's gonna be attached. 
So in my back pattern piece, the armhole length is 26.71 and on checking the left half of my sleeve, it's 27.64, which we already know. So once again, I'm going to adjust the side by moving it to the left by one centimeter. And now my left half total is 26.69, which is good enough for me. So let's get to stitching the sleeve to the garment. Now this time, instead of using the segment sewing tool, let me show you how to use the free sewing tool. First, I'm going to define my first segment by clicking here and here. Let's define the second segment. So I'm going to click from here to here. And once again, you can see these blue lines that show you which segments will be stitched together. Let's go to the left half of the sleeve as well and connect it to the back armhole, which is way over here. If you guys are ever confused on whether you have connected your stitch lines correctly, look at your 3D window and you can check if your stitch lines are running correctly from one piece to the next. Now to place the sleeve properly on the avatar, let's turn on the arrangement points again. Now click the pattern and click a blue dot. And the sleeve has been placed. Now remember that there is also this section that needs to be stitched. So let's go use the segment sewing tool and connect those together. Now, instead of creating a sleeve pattern for the avatar's left arm from scratch, all you need to do is right click on the sleeve pattern and choose symmetric pattern with sewing. And that will create a second pattern for you with all the stitch lines copied as well. And it is automatically placed around his arm too. Now hit space on your keyboard to simulate and the sleeves will stitch itself to the body. Since so much is complete, let's move to creating the neck band. But very quickly before that, I'm gonna give my garment a specific fabric in what is step number three. For this, I'm opening up my object browser and your object browser is basically where different objects in your garment are listed. This one is for fabrics, this is for graphics, buttons, buttonholes, top stitches, etc. If you click on anything in the object browser, you can open up the property editor to see its default properties and you can even edit those properties to completely customize it to whatever you need. Now I want to give this garment a t-shirt fabric, so I'm going to leave these details as is for now and scroll down till I see physical property and clicking it will open up this menu which lets me choose a fabric. I'm going to choose knit cotton rayon jersey. Now hit the space bar to simulate and you'll see that the garment will adjust itself to have the properties of that knit jersey. You can also double click on fabric one to rename it and I'm just going to call it body. Now let's close the object browser and we can move to step number four, which is creating the neckband. I'm going to do a self fabric neckband by creating a separate pattern piece. Now, in order to draft the neckband piece, I first need the total neck rounds measurement. Now we know that the edit pattern tool will show me the total measurement of any line that I click. So with it, let's click this half and this half and it shows that it is 27.97 in total. But that is of course only half the neck round. I can multiply this value by 2 or hold down shift and continue clicking the two remaining halves to get the total neck round measurement. But let me show you how you can get the same measurement in the property editor easily. If you see here, 2D line length will show you the total length of the two lines that you selected. It's 27.97, which we already know. But below it is symmetric length, which basically is the two lines that we selected, plus its symmetric halves. And therefore, this is the total neck round for us, which is 55.94 centimeters. So keeping that value in mind, I'm going to close the property editor then choose my rectangle tool to draft the neck band pattern. Like before, simply click once and when this table opens up, you can input your customized measurements. So I'm going to put my neck round measure of 55.94 for the width, followed by the height. Now I want my neck band to be 2 cm in height, but because in an actual t-shirt, the neck band will be folded in half, and then both ends will be stitched to the t-shirt body. I'm going to do the same here and therefore I'm going to put the height as 4 centimeters. Now hit OK and the pattern piece has formed. Before we stitch the neckband to the neck round, 
I'm going to click and hold the edit pattern tool to bring up the other tools under it. And I'm going to choose the add point tool. I'm then going to use this tool to create a new point like so on my back neck. Now this is because if you look at actual t-shirts, the neck bands are not stitched from HPS to HPS. They are actually stitched from a point that is a little below the HPS on the back of the t-shirt like this point. And this is done so that the neck band falls better and flatter at the shoulder seam instead of looking bulky with its own seam falling right there. It improves the overall look of the garment. So with that done, let's choose the free sewing tool and highlight the two segments that need to be stitched together. Our first segment is from here to here. Now my second segment is a combination of the front and back neck. So I'm going to hold down shift and first click from here to here, then click from here to here, and then click from here to here. Holding down shift will basically allow you to define multiple lines as the second segment. Once again, turn the arrangement points on and arrange your neckband on a blue dot. Let's turn the arrangement points off. Now hit simulate. We also need to stitch these ends together. So let's go complete that as well. Cool. Now for the neckband, let's fold it in half and stitch the ends together. To do this, I'm going to go back to my edit pattern tool. Then I'm going to highlight these two segments, right click and choose distribute internal line between segments. Doing that will open this box and I'm going to go with one. So you can see that I now have one internal line that is distributed equally between both lines. So let's hit OK. Now, why did I do this? I did this because the internal line is where I want my neckband to fold itself into two halves. And Clo actually has a tool to make your fabric fold as well. So this tool here is called the fold arrangement tool. And with it, I'm going to click on my internal line. And when you do that, these arrows will show up. And it basically shows the direction in which your fabric is facing. So I'm going to click on the red arrow and move it like so, so that the fabric turns to fold inside. Don't fold it too much, however, just about so much is fine. Now in the property editor, I'm also going to tick fold rendering and that will give me a nice clean pressed fold. Now use the segment sewing tool to connect the two ends of the neckband like so. Also come up here and change the angle to turned which just means that the turned over cloth will lie flat on the piece below. Now hit simulate. And that looks fine. The final steps for the neckband is to click on the collar pattern, come to the property editor, and down here under simulation properties, change the particle distance from 20 to 5 and the shrinkage weft from 100 to 80. Now hit simulate. Now it is recommended that for smaller pattern pieces, you reduce the particle distance to five because when this piece is stitched onto the garment, it will make it look better. If you want to know about particle distance, click the link up here. Now for shrinkage weft, on the other hand, on reducing this value, a pattern piece will shrink a bit. In this case, weft is the fabric I need reduced and not warp because weft is composed of the yarns that run horizontally in the garment. For the neckband to have a better fit, reducing the weft shrinkage causes it to shrink a little horizontally and thereby drape better on the avatar. Now back to the garment. With the neckband complete, step number five is to finish the raw edges at the body hem and the sleeve hem. So let's start with the hem at the sleeves. Let's say that I want my hem to be folded inward and finished at 2 cm height with a double needle stitch placed over it. For this, first I'm going to fold my fabric inwards and in step 6 we will add the stitch lines. So select the edit pattern tool, right click on the hem and let's choose offset pattern outline. Now, offsetting a pattern outline means extending the pattern outline. This table opens up and I'm going to choose two offsets and I'm also going to choose the distance between them to be two centimeters, which is the width that I want for my turned hem. Also check create internal line and then hit OK. Now on my 3D window, I can see a few irregularities on my t-shirt which might crop up for you too. Simply hit simulate and these irregularities will smooth out. 
Okay, now here's how I finish my hem. I'm going to take the fold arrangement tool again and click here. Then like before, when these arrows show up, I'm going to click the green arrow and turn it inwards like this. And this looks okay. Let's also check the other sleeve because symmetric editing is still on. And the other sleeve has folded in as well. Now under the property editor, once again, click on fold rendering so that we get a nice flat fold. Then with the segment sewing tool, let's sew this end to this end like so. Now hit simulate and let's check how the sleeve hem turned out. And there is one last section for us to sew together, so let's complete this as well. And the sleeve hem is now turned inwards and stitched completely. I'm going to go do the exact same thing to the body hem, so let's watch it like a time lapse. And we are done. If you guys don't want to see the red internal lines on your garment in the 3D window, come to 3D garment display and unclick show internal lines. And now we can just see the entire garment properly. All right, let's go to step number six, which is to add stitch lines to our garment. For this, open the object browser and we have all the different objects in our garment like graphics, buttons, etc. Let's come here and click on the section for top stitches. And you can see that Clo already has a default top stitch available for us to use. Now you can just use this stitch itself for your stitch lines. But if you want to edit this stitch, then open the property editor. Make sure the default top stitch is clicked to see its properties. And I'm going to modify a few things. First, we have an offset of 1 by 16th inch, which means that if we apply this top stitch on an internal line, the space between the top stitch and the internal line will be 1 by 16th inch. Let's say I want it to be 0 so that when I apply the stitch lines, it falls exactly on the internal line. I'm also going to come to SPI, which stands for stitch per inch, and I'm going to reduce it to 10. And this means that there will now be 10 stitches created per inch. I'm also going to increase the thread thickness to 100. And down here, I'm going to change the color to a gray shade so you all can see it better when it's applied. Hit apply and close. Finally, come down to configuration and choose two for the number of lines because I want a double needle stitch. Now to apply the stitch on the garment, come here and click the segment top stitch tool. And with it, I'm going to click on the internal line where I want my stitch applied. And you all can see that the double needle stitch has appeared. Let's go apply the stitch at the back as well and at the sleeve hem. Keep in mind that even after the stitch has been applied, you can come here to the property editor and change its features and any change you make will be applied to the 3D window automatically. For example, right here under configuration, I can change the distance between both stitch lines from 0.63 to 0.4 and you can see the 3D window has updated. Now up here, I'm going to double click and rename this stitch to DNTS at hemlines and then I'm going to create one more type of stitch that I can use at the neckline. For this, click on add and Clo will give you another default top stitch to work with. Let's rename it to SNTS at neck and sleeves and go edit its properties. I'm okay with most of these settings, but let's change the SPI to 8 and the thread thickness to 100 again. Then let's zoom into the neck and apply it like so. Let's also apply it at the armhole. And that's it with finishing the hems. So this is it with the creation of the t-shirt guys. What comes after is just me being dramatic, but stick around if you want to also learn how to add a graphic, how to change the base color of the t-shirt, and how to give this t-shirt a side seam zipper to make it look all streetish and fancyish and all that. So let's start with step number seven, how to add a graphic. Now I'm gonna apply my graphic at the back of this t-shirt. I have a graphic that I created on Adobe Illustrator and exported as a PNG saving it on my desktop. So let's turn the avatar around and click on the graphic tool. 
This window will open up when you click it. And all you got to do is find the graphic wherever you saved it. Mine is on the desktop, so I'm going to choose it and then hit open. Now simply click wherever you want your graphic to be placed. And this box will open asking you to list the dimensions of the graphic that you want. I'm going to change the dimensions to 30 centimeters width and the height has adjusted itself proportionately. Now hit OK and your graphic has been placed. Now, if you want to make any more changes to its size or its placement, click on this, the transform graphic tool and then proceed. My tool has automatically changed to the transform graphic tool. So I'm going to click my graphic like so and use these arrows to increase the graphic size. I can also click the graphic itself and move it around like so if I want to change the placement. There's one more tiny graphic that I want to add to the front of this t-shirt. So I'm going to go do that. Another thing that you can do is come here to the graphic tab and any graphics that you imported will be listed here. You can click on one and open the property editor to make further changes to that graphic. All right, guys, step number eight is changing the color of this t-shirt. I'm actually happy with the white, but in case you want to make it another color, I'm going to click on the fabric tab, click on the first fabric listed, which we renamed body and open the property editor. Let's scroll down a bit and under basic parameters, you can see the color listed. Click on the white swatch and this table opens up, allowing you to change to any other color. Let's click black, for instance, and hit apply and close. And this is what we have. I can also use the tab up here to pick a color. I'm just going to go back and pick a white. OK, guys, the last thing I'm going to show you, step number nine, is how to add a zipper to the side seams. I'm going to add it just along here. Start by taking the add point tool and say we want a 20 centimeter zipper. I know that this part is already 2 centimeters. This part has been folded inwards, so it doesn't count. So 20 minus this 2 is 18. So I'm going to right click on this segment with the add point tool, type in 18 centimeters and hit OK. Do the same for the front pattern too. Now with the edit sewing tool, I need to remove the stitches on that 20 centimeter length where my zipper should fall. I just need to click on an existing stitch line and hit delete. And again here. But this line, I don't need to delete it completely. I only need to remove a part of it. So I'm going to click here and drag it upwards till the 20 centimeter mark and do the same to the stitch lines on the front. Since symmetric pattern editing is on, we don't need to go do it to the other side seam. Now hit simulate and this is what your side seam will look like. Now with the edit pattern tool, I'm selecting these three segments, right click and choose offset internal line. 0.5 centimeters is exactly the measurement that I want. So I'm going to hit OK, but also remember to untick extend. Now extend will make the internal line that you created go up all the way to the pattern edge. And that's not what I want. I want the internal line to be created for just this area. And if you want to see this internal line on your garment in the 3D window as well, come here to 3D garment display and choose show internal lines and the line has appeared. Now do the same thing to the front pattern piece and both internal lines have appeared. Let's zoom in and I'm going to choose the internal polygon tool and with it, I'm going to carefully draw a line that connects the tip of the internal line to the edge of the pattern. Next, with the edit pattern tool, I'm going to drag my mouse just over the area where both these lines meet. Right click and choose join overlapping points. This will join both lines into one continuous line. Now with the transform pattern tool, click on the lines on both patterns, right click and choose cut. This will cut out these pattern pieces from the main t-shirt pattern. Now select these pieces and hit delete because we don't need them anymore. Delete the pieces on the other side as well and your 3D window will look like this once you simulate. This cutout area is where our zipper is going to be stitched. Now the zipper tool is simple guys. You can click on it here. What we're going to do is we're first going to define the segment where the left side of the zipper should be stitched. So click here once and double click here to complete defining the first segment. 
Now let's define the segment where the right side of the zipper has to be stitched. So click here and double click here. Hit simulate and it is done. Let's go do the same thing to the other side. And the zipper is done, but I can further click on the zipper with my select tool and open up my property editor to edit it. For example, under preset, you can change the zipper from a plastic one to a metal one. You can also change its size, its width, etc. I'm going to scroll down to material and under teeth, I'm going to change its teeth color to black. I'm also going to go to tape and change that to black color as well. Now, if I click on just the zipper head, I can edit this too. So under property editor, I can change the sliders shape. I'm actually happy with the current shape, but below it are puller options. So let's change the puller to this one. Now down here, let's change the color to black. And that's it with the zipper guys. To make it a bit more realistic, I'm going to go add a stitch line running around the zipper using the same tools that I showed you before. Now finally, step number 10 is to get your file ready for rendering. So what I'm going to do is click anywhere in my 2D window, then hit Command A on my keyboard to select all the patterns at once. Now in the property editor, I'm going to reduce the particle distance to 5. And when I hit simulate, you will see that the drape of your t-shirt will look much better and much more realistic. I'm going to turn my avatar off by going to avatar display and unticking show avatar. We can now see only the t-shirt. So let's go to the render window by clicking render and render. I'm going to make a few adjustments, maybe give it a black background. And when you finally click on render, this is what it should look like. Here's another render and here's another render. And that is how I created my oversized t-shirt. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope that was easy for you to follow. If you have any queries at all, feel free to list them in the comments below and I will get back to you ASAP. See you guys next week.